All right, here is a vertebra, and uh, we're going to cover some general features that you find on all vertebra on this vertebra first. Then we'll talk about which region of the vertebral column it's found. This is um, the body of the vertebra. This is the vertebral foramen. Here we have a transverse process, another transverse process, and here is the vertebral spine. If you look at this opening, the hole here, it has kind of a roof over it. This roof is made up of the lamina. Here is one lamina, here is another lamina. Um, these little, this region right here are the pedicles. Here's one pedicle, here's another pedicle. And the arch formed over the vertebral foramen, here's the foramen, and here is the arch, is formed by one pedicle, one lamina, another lamina, another pedicle, vertebral arch. Um, in addition to these three processes, we have four other processes. We have the articular process here, articular process, and then I turn it over, and we see another articular process and another articular process. These little facets are where the vertebra articulates with the um, vertebra just beneath or inferior to this one. These little rough, I mean these little smooth faces are where the vertebra articulates with the art, um, vertebrae that is just superior to this one. Now those are all general features that you find in all vertebrae. This particular one is a thoracic vertebra, found, uh, and you can tell that it's from the thoracic region because the articular facets, or faces here on the articular process, are facing, superior, are facing anterior and posteriorly. Now, to, in order to see that, we have to put it in anatomical position, and I'm going to do that right now. Here's anatomical position. The spine is facing away from you, the body is facing toward you. These little facets, let me tip it so you can see, are facing anteriorly and turning it around. These are facing posteriorly. Now th that's a tip off that it is a thoracic vertebra. Another th uh, characteristic that will tell you that it's from the thoracic region is that the spinous process is very long and it uh, points inferiorly. This is a vertebra taken from the cervical region. Um, the way you can always tell that it is from the cervical region is that there are two extra holes in it. Here is the vertebral foramen that we find in all vertebrae, and these two holes on the side here are the transverse foramina. They are found in the transverse process. So this is a a little bit different than it looked like on the other one, but that's the transverse process, and there is a hole in it called a transverse foramen. If a vertebra has a transverse foramen, it is uh, one that is found in the cervical region. A couple of other characteristics that help us to recognize this as cervical is that the spinous process on most cervical vertebrae is what we call bifid or split. Um, this is the only region that has a split uh, spinous process. Um, also, we, you can see the pedicles, the lamina, the articular fa facets or processes there, and here's another one right there, and um, the body of the vertebra. Here's the arch, and there's the foramen. This is the atlas, or the first cervical vertebra, and it's recognizable because it has an uh, almost non-existent spinous process. You see just the little nub there. Spinous process is missing. Also, the body is basically missing here. So you have a great big vertebral foramen, no body, and no spinous process. Um, it is from the cervical region, so there are two transverse foramina in the transverse, uh, for, uh, transverse process, processes. Um, so, you need to be able to recognize this as the atlas or C1. This is C2 or the axis. Um, it's re recognizable because 
on the body, here's the body, here's the body right here, and if you look at the body, um, there is a projection, a tooth-like projection called the dens or the odontoid process um, that is part of the axis. It's the only vertebra that has that process, that little bump of bone there, um, and it's found on the axis or C2. It is from the cervical region. You can tell on this one, you can see that the spinous process is bifid, even though you can only see part of that. It's broken off over here. Um, it has all the other parts we talked about. Here is an articular facet, articular facet. Here is another articular facet, articular facet. Here's the body. Here are the transverse foramina. Um, and here is the arch. Okay. All right. Let me see. Here is a lumbar vertebra. Um, uh, one of the ways that you can identify it as being from the lumbar region is that the body is more massive relative to the size of the vertebra than in any other region. Another way that you can tell that it is a lumbar vertebra is that the spine is process uh, is posteriorly angled rather than inferiorly angled like we saw in the thoracic region. So this looks um, like a shorter, stubbier spine, and it points posteriorly. Another characteristic that tells you that it is from the lumbar region is that the articular facets are medially directed or laterally directed. Um, here's the midline right here. There's the, rough, there's the round little spot right there where it articulates with the uh, uh, vertebrae above it that is medially directed and these two articular facets are laterally directed. So those things, those characteristics tell you that it is from the lumbar region. Here is the sacrum. The sacrum is actually five fused vertebrae. One, two, three, four, five. And um, you're just responsible to recognize this as the sacrum it has features, you're just not responsible for them. Articulated to the sacrum is the coccyx. And the coccyx uh, has a variable number of bones. It can have three, it can have four. It just depends on the person. But they are uh, three little, oftentimes jointed, sometimes fused, sometimes a little flexible um, bones. That's the coccyx. Collectively, it's called the coccyx. Here we have um, the vertebral column kind of strung together. Um, there is another opening or hole or foramen that you're responsible for that is only found where the vertebrae are stacked, as we see here. I'm putting this probe in a hole right there. This hole is only there when two vertebrae are together. It is called the intervertebral foramen. There's one on either side of the ver uh, vertebral column. Now watch, as I separate these, there's no hole there. That hole only forms when these bones are articulated. So this probe is in the intervertebral foramen. That allows the exit of the spinal nerves from the spinal, col uh, spinal cord out, of, out through the vertebral column. Um, next thing on your list is intervertebral disc. The intervertebral disc is a cartilaginous disc found between the bodies of the vertebrae, and that's for cushioning. Okay.